Welcome to Floron. Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and uh, I've got something a little different for you today. A new web video series that I'm going to call Floron. And it's going to be a showcase for all the different creative tools and little toys I find around the web. You know, I'm always tinkering with something. I love to tinker with new programs, uh, especially stuff that lets you create things. 3D graphics, 2D graphics, um, anything, especially stuff that doesn't exist. <laughs> I like to make virtual things. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to share some of these programs that I find um, and maybe inspire some people to get in there and try some new apps and uh, get their hands dirty and make some stuff. So let's uh, give it a try and see how it goes. New and nifty. All right, this first thing I want to show you, I'm not really sure if it's a tool or a toy, but uh, it's a lot of fun and it's called Face Rig. And it just came out on Steam on uh, early access, kind of a beta version for 10 bucks. And uh, what it is is it takes the output from your webcam and turns it into this 3D animated avatar in real time and it follows your m movements it does some lip syncing with the audio and uh, it will do some of your facial expressions as well and I think it's pretty cool I I'm surprised at how well it works considering I'm just using the kind of a cruddy webcam and whatnot it's probably about 12 or 15 different avatars you can use right now This guy is pretty fierce. <laughs> but I think this has a lot of potential for something like a Second Life virtual world or whatever virtual worlds come about with something like the Oculus Rift and virtual reality. Uh, having this kind of customizable avatar that actually has expressions and um, follows your movements and stuff could really add a lot of life to something like that. And I know that um, Philip Rosedale who originally created Second Life is working on a new virtual world called High Fidelity and uh, he uses something similar with some webcams to do uh, real-time facial expressions and facial movements in world so I think this is a fun little toy right now um, you could also use it um, for something like this podcast or live twitch streaming what it does is um, it'll give you a fake web camera on your system so it can work with any program that will pick up a webcam. So instead of feeding it your webcam, you feed it the face face rig virtual camera and you can put it out on Hangouts or Twitch or what have you. I'm actually tempted to use it for this web series because it's kind of fun, something a little different. And, you know, I don't always feel like being on camera all the time. This guy needs a shave. Uh, eventually you'll be able to add your own avatars and download other people's avatars from the web which will be cool It'd be great to have a custom avatar I'd actually have like to have one that looked exactly like me <laughs> and that was always uh, my favorite part of Second Life was uh, changing the avatar I had a huge collection of different avatars I could wear all the time and uh, I just think this has a lot of potential for virtual worlds or even just video chat I mean, who doesn't want to be a fuzzy kitty or uh, a hamburger once in a while? <laughs> so that's FaceRig, and you can find it at FaceRig.com. I was having trouble getting to their website the last couple of days, but I'm sure I'll get that fixed soon. They're probably overwhelmed since they just now uh, released the beta version. Collection. Okay, next up I've got a little collection of apps that let you create geometric 3D objects and uh, these kind of objects are generally a little more difficult to make in a standard 3D modeler because they're they're more math mathematically based or you know kind of structured and rigid so I found a little collection of apps that helps you make these kind of crazy things this first one is kind of a random object generator all you gotta do is refresh the page and it spits out a neat little geometric object and you can save it either a picture or a 3d.obj file and uh, when I first found this thing I, I made dozens and dozens of shapes and saved them to my hard drive just in case something happened to the app or whatever I really love this thing 
And besides just being randomly generated, there's also a little recipe down here that you can use. Uh, and a little, it kind of explains some of the rules. You can just put your recipe in here and hit enter. But I just kind of like to hit randomize and see what neat shapes come up. <laughs> and there's another similar one I found called Geo Editor. But it gives you a little more direct control over what's happening. You can pick a shape to start with and pick a few different effects that are going to happen to the shape. And then you can add another shape in if you want over here. And it's just kind of fun to go in here and tinker around and see what comes up. Maybe you'll see a shape that gives you an idea for uh, another project or um, you just find something you weren't looking for, which I think is always fun. And you, this one also saves in .obj, either both the objects together or separately. Okay, this next one gives you a little more control over what's going on. It's more like a, a kind of standard 3D modeler that has some primitive shapes and selection tools and different operators you can apply to the shape. And it's called Top Mod. It's a topological mesh modeler. And this one is really good at making kind of very intricate space filling shapes that would be very difficult to make in something like 3D Max or Studio without some sort of scripting language. And they'd also be really good for 3D printing because of the complexity and the, the way you can make a shape that takes up a lot of space but has a lot of empty space in it so they'd be kind of cheap to print and I've had a lot of fun with this one already um, there are some good tutorials on YouTube you can watch to get a hang of it and uh, here's a couple of objects I made while messing around the other night this one looks like a little bit of pollen here's some kind of weird soccer ball flower thing <laughs> I love these kind of organic but mathematical shapes it's one of the reasons I like messing around with 3d fractals so much so that one is called top mod and these next two are a little more complicated um, instead of using like a 3d modeler or editor you use a programming language to create your shapes which allows for some really intricate and really interesting things to be done if you want to take the time and learn how to do them. Uh, the first one's called Structure Synth and another one called Fugu that are both very similar that uh, give you a, a, a programming language. In the case of Fugu it's Luau which is a, a kind of a more standard programming language that I've heard of anyway. Structure Synth has its own kind of design grammar but if you take a look at here's the Flickr page for Structure Synth, and you can look at the kind of intricate, crazy constructions you can make with this coding language. A lot of these ones on this Flickr pool have example code that comes with them, so you can grab the code, stick it in the Structure Synth, and mess with it, uh, which is always a great way to learn any kind of programming language or um, stuff like that it's always good to start with something that works and uh, kind of tinker around with it <laughs> until you get a feel for what's going on oh wow these are great look at this one it looks like graffiti or something and fugu is similar uh, it also supports animation with some really interesting examples here on this creativeapplications.net page I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> I really got to bear down and learn how to use one of these apps one of these days because I could really have a lot of fun. This Fugu seems like it lends itself a little more to kind of organic shapes. So that's Structure Synth and Fugu. Uh, there's just a couple more that I want to mention while I'm on the topic. Uh, here's one called Incendia. It's kind of a 3D fractal generator, but more in a sense of combining 3D shapes using different algorithms to create more intricate um, 3D constructs. Uh, I remember playing around with this one before I got sucked into Mandelbulb 3D because this used to be one of the only ways you could kind of explore 3D fractal shapes. And it's still pretty cool. Um, after you know, I just remembered this the other night and went to the page and it reminded me I need to download and mess with this program again. Because you can make some very detailed, intricate constructions 
once again that would be hard to make otherwise and you can give them this kind of organic feel with the different algorithms that Incendia has the interface is a little strange but I you know once you get used to it it's not it's not difficult or um, obtuse anyway it's just not your standard windows uh, requesters and layout and whatnot and the other one I wanted to mention real quick is called Grobato and this used to be something kind of similar to Incendia but it seems like since last time I used it it's kind of evolved into more of a full featured 3d editor as well but it lets you do similar things by combining 3d shapes and different formulas to create weird stuff like this <laughs> I had a little more trouble using this one than I had with Incendia but I know a lot of people like it it's uh, pretty popular on places like DeviantArt I think so there's just a couple more Incendia and Grobato sound and music alright let's switch gears and talk about a couple of music and sound apps and these two apps are going to help you get around problems that you might have with copyright. Uh, these days, everybody's super worried about copyright, and especially with music. Um, you know, you can make your own song, and even if you just have part of the song that sounds like another song, you'll get some bogus takedown notice, or maybe you used a loop that you purchased off some site. I mean, I'm super careful, and I have, you know, a couple dozen uh, outstanding copyright notices on my channel. Um, even though I make most of my own songs or heck I've even gotten notices on me just speaking into the microphone so these two are going to help you at least avoid some of those problems by generating new music and sounds so the first one's called fake music generator and uh, what this does with just a single refresh of the web page it makes an entire new album of music that's in the public domain that you can use for anything you want. All you gotta do is hit refresh and it comes up with a name for the album, a fake name for the uh, the composer, even album cover art and you can download the songs in mp3 format or download them in MIDI and stick them into your music apps like Ableton Live or Fruit Loops or whatever you might use if you make your own music and you know the music's not great of course because it's automatically generated but some of it is pretty good and uh, I've used it in my own projects and you definitely don't have to worry about copyright because it's randomly generated in public domain and if you do get a notice on it you can definitely dispute it by pointing out your source uh, it has a lot of it has a kind of a classical or baroque music feel or maybe a 8-bit music feel to it I think this is a great site. It's just a great idea and it's potentially useful. You know, uh, I usually just generate a couple albums worth, download them all, and then uh, look through them until I f find one that sounds good. And I usually do. And the other one is kind of a standard tool for video game devs called BFXer. And it's based on another program called SFXer that was created for the 10th uh, Ludum Dare competition and uh, basically it just lets you create random sound effects with just a couple of presses of the button you can uh, start off with one that might sound like a coin pickup oops that's pretty loud uh, or explosions laser shots and if you found one that you kinda like you can hit the mutate button get a bunch of variations on it or you can go in here and control everything uh, down to the little minuscule the different um, parameters you can adjust it's a great tool and I use it all the time I've used it for crash lander I use it to make all the sounds for my gravitas game it's just awesome and then you can also save the presets if you want to come back and work with them later um, all kinds of options great tool and it's just on the web or you can download it for Windows and Mac and it's called BFXer Toy Box. and here's a neat little web app I saw come through my Twitter stream this morning it's called geometric photo filter 
Uh, I put it in the toy box, but it could uh, actually be uh, an art tool, really. It's just kind of fun to play around with, but it does make some interesting images. And uh, what it does is let you capture a snapshot from your webcam or upload a picture. And then it kind of applies these procedural painting methods to the image to kind of rebuild the image uh, using different effects. And it's got a ton of different sliders, which I always love to mess around with in any kind of program like this. Or you've got some presets up here um, that you can use as well. And you can switch between them while, while it's drawing if you want to combine the effects. It takes a little while sometimes for the image to build up, but uh, it's pretty neat. I like it. I've seen similar things for Photoshop that cost 40 50 bucks for just a plug-in, so it's nice to have it right in the web browser. Follow. And I wanted to finish up by just kind of recommending a couple people that I follow on the web that you might like. Uh, these are just people who I enjoy their work and they're always sending around interesting links and showing off really cool projects they're working on. First one is Henry Segerman. Uh, I follow him on G+, but he's also active on Twitter. And Henry does recently a lot of really cool 3D printed fractals. He's kind of a math wizard and uh, um, he goes around speaking about mathematics and 3D fractals and um, I'm just a big fan of his work. I met him years ago in Second Life, and he was one of the first people to show anything in my virtual gallery there. It was actually one of these autoglyphs, a virtual version of one of these really interesting objects. Um, I think it was this one right here that says Taurus, and it makes it into a Taurus shape. But he's basically a math wizard who makes art out of math, which I think is really cool. And if I was better at math, I would do more stuff like he does so <laughs> follow Henry if you like that kind of thing and uh, another person is Jessica Rosencrantz she also does a lot of really cool 3d printed fractal stuff lately and she is uh, at nervous underscore Jessica on Twitter she is part of the uh, nervous system design studio and they do all sorts of generative art, uh, cool 3D printing. They even have some online tools where you can design, like this one, you can design a bracelet online, tweak all these parameters, change some colors, build it out, and then hit a button and have it 3D printed and shipped right to you, which is really cool. And she's also always posting some really cool pictures of undersea life and other organic stuff that kind of matches up with the the shapes that they're making all the time. So give Jessica a follow if you like that sort of thing as well. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, I think that's going to do it for this first episode of Fleuron. Um, let me know what you think of the idea for the show and uh, down in the comments if you have any suggestion for apps I might cover or topics that you'd like to see covered or uh, anything else about the show, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to get some back and forth going between uh, the people who are watching the show and what I'm giving you guys. So um, let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button down below, and uh, I'll see you next time on Fleuron.